Two of the biggest surprises at EICMA this year are a couple of new bikes from traditionally overlooked and low-key manufacturers. The first is an all-new model that defines a new segment in Suzuki's lineup, and the other is a completely redesigned and much-awaited replacement for a previous model discontinued by Moto Guzzi back in 2017. And while both these bikes share some design components with other models in their ranges, they both break new ground technologically, offering features that no other bike in their ranges offer. These flagship bikes are statements of intent by their manufacturers, clearly marking new aspirations and directions that will put pressure on their competitors and blur the line between standard and premium manufacturers. And that can't be bad for us consumers. For years, Suzuki churned out the same standard models with little more than different paint schemes. But in the last year, we've had a veritable avalanche of new Suzukis with the GSX S1000 GT, Vstrom 800 DE, and the GS8S last year, followed this year by the GS8 SR, the road going Vstrom 800, and now the Suzuki GSX S1000 GX, a bike parked firmly between the GSX S1000 GT and the Vstrom 1050 DE, creating an all new segment in Suzuki's lineup called the Sport Crossover, defined by Suzuki as an exciting new expression of luxurious riding comfort and pleasure. Essentially, they say, this is a sporty tourer offering more premium sport touring experience than the traditional sport tourers and a more upright riding position, much like that on the Vstroms, only with pizzazz. After launching what was probably the bike of the show, if not the year, last year, Moto Guzzi's V100 has spawned the eagerly anticipated return of the Moto Guzzi Stelvio. The Stelvio already has a huge and loyal following and perhaps threatens to be as a big a hit as the V100 was last year, with the Guziisti at least. The Stelvio was first introduced back in November 2007 and after a couple of redesigns its loyal followers were massively disappointed when 10 years later its air-cooled 1200cc 8-valve engine became a victim of Euro 4 and the model was sadly killed off. Traditionally an ADV bike with a huge 32-litre tank and a low-slung 1200cc engine, the new version continues in the ADV mould but with heaps of new tech and arguably better looks. But before we compare these two bikes, let's first confront the elephant in the room. These bikes are, on the surface anyway, not necessarily aimed at exactly the same rider or even the same market segment. Some might say the Stelvio is competing more with the Suzuki Vstrom 1050 DE, while the Suzuki's GSX-S 1000 GX is competing with Moto Guzzi's V100 Mandelo. But I'd point out that the Suzuki's lower GSX-S 1000 GT is likely more akin to Guzzi's V100 Roadster, and while the Stelvio does have a lot in common with the Vstrom, it is a scaled-up V100, just as the GX is a scaled-up GT. And so, therefore, they lend themselves to comparison with each other. Although called a sport crossover by Suzuki, the GSX-S 1000 GX is squarely aimed at the sport touring rider who wants more room and luxury than is offered by the GT, while being sportier and more nimble than the Vstrom with its 17-inch front wheel, this bike is designed to stay firmly on the blacktop. Suzuki have no pretensions that this is an adventure tourer. They have their Vstrom range for that. But the Stelvio is marketed by Guzzi as an adventure tourer, and with its 19-inch front spoke wheel, 170mm of suspension travel, and off-road inspired tyres, Moto Guzzi are aiming the bike at riders who want to take the odd journey off-road on the dirt as well as the blacktop. But let's face facts. Most riders with ADV-capable bikes don't actually take them off-road, and while the Guzzi will certainly be capable in some dirt if ridden gingerly, most will likely never see more dirt than the local Ken talking trash about his ex-Barbie while sipping a lemon tea latte at the local Starbucks. So I expect these two new bikes will appeal to many of the same riders, the Stelvio directly competing with the Suzuki in the eyes of buyers who just want a fully loaded sports tourer. The question is then, how do these bikes compare with each other? Well, let's discuss the specs first. 
On paper, at least, many journos are happy to give the nod in the engine department to the Suzuki. The GSX-S 1000GX appears, at first glance, to pip the Gutsi in the engine department simply by putting out 152 horsepower compared with the Stelvio's 115 horsepower. With its up-and-down quick shifter for streetlight drag racing, this may be a win to the tall Suzuki. But all is not as it first seems. To get the four-cylinder Suzuki GSX 1000GX's K5-inspired peak of 150 horsepower, it won't surprise you to know that you will have to twist it up to a racy 11,000 RPM, while the maximum torque of 78.2 foot-pounds, or 106 newton meters, also comes along at a fairly high 9,250 RPM. While the horsepower curve is steep, with not much down low, it's a pretty flat torque curve, offering a large chunk of that maximum torque several thousand RPM lower in the range. For the sportier rider, this will be just what the doctor ordered. But for the more tourer-focused rider, the Stelvio's V-Twin offers more real-world power. That is a more mid-range-inspired power band. It makes its peak 115 horsepower at just over 8,500 RPM and is already producing 100 horsepower at 6,500 RPM. Then there's the torque curve, which coughs up more torque than the Suzuki, 3,000 RPM lower in the rev range at 6,750 RPM, with 82% of that torque made only at 3,500 RPM. And while the Stelvio doesn't yet offer a quick shifter, it does have that gorgeous, smooth and maintenance-free carden shaft. Just the thing for touring. Of course, the Suzuki's K5-derived inline-4 is a proven, lighter, more compact engine, with only one cylinder head, so this engine will be cheap to produce. The Stelvio's engine, while undoubtedly being heavier, more expensive to create and needing two separate cylinder heads, does lend itself to a lower center of gravity despite being less compact than the Suzuki's inline four. It is also going to be a cinch to maintain, as access to the valves and spark plugs is much easier than on the heavily shrouded inline four on the GX. So, as expected, these engines offer very different qualities. Broadly speaking, the Stelvio's engine offers more grunt down low, with a more mid-range bias, perhaps better suited to ADV work and comfortable touring, while the Suzuki GSX-S 1000GX will likely offer a more sporty, spirited feel, squeezing a bit more juice from your adrenal glands. However, while you may expect the updated K5 four-cylinder Suzuki to be smoother, there are reports of intrusive vibrations and odd noises from the cam chain tensioner by owners on its slightly older sibling, the GSX-S 1000 GT, which runs the same engine. The Stelvio's engine is the same as in the V100 Mandela, which is apparently very smooth. And that counterbalance shaft almost cancels out the rock when you roll, so there's no more complaining about shaft drive or jacking. It will likely be a better off-road motor as well, as low grunt is what you need in the gravel. So for now, we'll have to wait on this one, but if I was forced to make a prediction, I would say the Stelvio's engine is more fit for purpose here, if we're talking sport tours. While the chassis and frames of both these bikes are based on their stablemates, the Stelvio gets a beefed-up headstock, four anchor points rather than just two, increasing rigidity, and it uses the engine as a load-bearing element to make the Stelvio stronger and better suited for adventure riding than the V100. Both bikes have good ground clearance, with the Gutsi offering 170 mm of suspension travel front and rear, compared with the Suzuki's 150 mm. Both, then, have long stroke suspension that will be comfortable and reasonably plush when needed. But for me on paper, it's the Suzuki that steals the show in the suspension department, moving into the realms of premium manufacturers for the first time using electronic semi-active suspension front and rear, while the Stelvio employs a 43mm Saks upside-down fork adjustable for preload and rebound on the front and a Saks rebound preload adjustable shock on the rear. About the Suzuki suspension, the Showa-based semi-active suspension is a system that takes information from the suspension's own stroke sensors and the bike's IMU to monitor the bike's condition and the road surface and constantly adapt the suspension to suit. The suspension has electronically controlled damping adjustment front and rear, adjusting a thousand times a second and measuring suspension's position to within one one thousandth of a millimeter. Both compression and rebound damping are also adjusted in response to the computer's findings, and speed is also taken into account, firming the ride up as you go faster. 
The suspension also reduces pitch under braking, while the SFRC system is Suzuki's take on the skyhook concept, whereby the bike's position is monitored in relation to an imaginary point in the air above it, aiming to keep it hanging from that point regardless of undulations of the road surface beneath. Of course, all this kit is adjustable with modes to alter its behavior between hard, medium and soft settings. With this system, Suzuki has moved into the premium manufacturer realm. Semi-active suspension used to be the unique realm of European models and I can't help feeling Moto Guzzi missed their mark by not incorporating semi-active suspension on the Stelvio, considering it is already employed on its sibling, the V100 Mandelo S. So on this point, for me, it's an overwhelming win for the Suzuki GSX 1000 GX over the Stelvio in the suspension department. Both big bikes come with big Brembos on the front, so braking really shouldn't be the deciding factor here. Both bikes are dripping with high-tech features, which depending on your taste might be just what you're looking for, or just simply overwhelming. Both bikes come with six-axis IMUs, ride-by-wire, cornering traction control and ABS, with the Suzuki having three rider modes which are tied to the active suspension, power delivery and traction control levels. But within that, you can custom set your power delivery mode, suspension, damping modes, ABS intrusion, roll pitch, three power delivery modes, and optionally have it temporarily automatically stabilize and adapt to uneven rough road surfaces, overriding your custom modes if need be to damp throttle response and soften suspension response if the road gets uneven to smooth out the ride. Then there's the bi-directional quick shifter tied to the ride by wire throttle, cruise control and stoppy preventers. Where does it end? Wow. While the Stelvio can't offer the semi-active suspension yet, but I bet it's coming, it does offer five rider modes, including an off-road mode, removing ABS from the rear, increasing the engine braking and allowing the traction control to be turned off for the dirt. The Stelvio is the only one of the two to offer radar sensors as an option tied to adaptive cruise control, using increasing engine brake control to slow the bike down if the vehicle in front starts to decelerate. There's also forward collision warning, blind spot detection, lane change assist notifying the rider via its smaller 5-inch TFT, mirrors and audible signals of anyone in your blind spot. The Stelvio also offers LED bending lights which illuminate the inside of corners. Still, again, despite all of this, for me the Suzuki takes the tech prize with the semi-active suspension trumping Stelvio's radar. But that's a personal opinion and you may value the radar more. No matter. Both these bikes control these features via simple-looking, robust switchgear. Their TFT screens, which, as found on their smaller siblings, are both highly rated, and there is little to choose between them, possibly coming down to personal taste. Far be it for me to say, and while a Suzuki does have a larger 6.5-inch TFT screen, I'm not sure which one shows up better in the sunlight. But if the bike you choose comes down to a TFT screen in this case, you should probably walk away from motorcycles, get a nice plush couch, and a large monitor for your laptop. The ergos on these bikes are an improvement on their structurally smaller siblings, offering more legroom and a taller, more upright stance, adding to the comfort over longer journeys. I currently own a Suzuki V-Strom 1000 after having owned many Suzukis. My one gripe has always been the airflow around screens, mirrors and tank. And I've always gone aftermarket to avoid buffeting with the windshield. I'm hoping Suzuki got this right with their adjustable screen on the GX. Gutsi doesn't mince their words on this though. They claim to have spent more than 1,500 hours of simulations, wind tunnel testing, and CFD calculations on all forward surfaces and the electronically adjustable screen, and have eliminated rear air vortices and perfected the art of wind deflection. Believe both manufacturers at your peril. Only a ride will really determine whether your stature, your helmet model, and your tolerance or preferences will really work out behind the shield of these particular bikes. We'll call it a tie on this one until I ride them both. Both of these bikes offer upright seating positions with perhaps the Stelvio accommodating the passenger in a less exposed sporty stance, with the rear passenger on the Stelvio sitting a little lower and not quite so exposed. Both Gutsi and Suzuki offer integrated luggage solutions, but I'm sure aftermarket solutions will be available very soon for both models. Perhaps more important for touring bikes than electronics, aero and TFT screens is fuel range. 
the Stelvio's tank is reduced from 32 to 21 litres, with a claimed consumption of 5.1 litres per 100 kilometres, or 46 US miles per gallon, giving a theoretical range of 411 kilometres, or 255 miles. Not bad. This is more than 100 kilometres, or 62 miles, more than the theoretical range than the 19-litre carrying Suzuki with a claimed 6.2 litres per 100 kilometres, or 38 US miles per gallon consumption, can do. That is a considerable difference, and the win for me obviously goes to the Stelvio here. With 100 kilometres more range, that's pretty substantial. But not so fast. A big consideration for some, particularly those wanting to travel off-road or commute, is weight. The claimed curb weight of the Stelvio is a considerable 246 kilograms or 542 pounds and is significantly heavier than the 232 kilograms or 511 pounds curb weight of the GX. 14 kilogram bags of sugar or your white powder of choice is not to be sneezed at. While a small amount of this extra bulk on the Stelvio can be explained away by carrying half a gallon more fuel, the Gutsi perhaps gets some respite for the fact that its V-twin has a naturally low centre of gravity. However, the weight hamstrings the Gutsi in this Comparo, and I have to give it to Suzuki. The Gutsi's big 19-inch front will reduce its responsiveness slightly and front-end feel compared with the Suzuki, but together with the longer travel suspension, will likely give a smoother ride. Depending on your tyre choice, this all comes down to preference. If you're more concerned with munching miles and some off-road action, then obviously the Gutsi will be less wearing. The Suzuki, though, will offer you sharper handling the whole ride long. Then there are the looks. This is subjective. The more angular, stacked headlight Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GX comes in two colors in Canada, the handsome metallic Triton blue and the glass sparkle black, and one color in the US, the gorgeous pearl matte shadow green, while Europe gets all three of those choices. The Stelvio comes in a splashy orange-gray-black Giallo Savannah, and my favorite, the black, gray, and silver with a little yellow swatch on the tank called Nero Volcano. It will appeal to Guziisti, and while it has hints of the very handsome V100, it is also reminiscent of the older Stelvio. It looks purposeful, planted, and rugged. The big tank dominates together with the integrated fairing and the Eagle logo Guzzi front light. That single-sided swing arm isn't bad either. I find both bikes attractive in different ways, and the looks appeal to me equally. But what do you think? I think both companies have done a great job on the styling, with the purposeful planted Stelvio no doubt getting the nod from the nostalgic crowd, and the more angular and modern looking Suzuki getting plaudits from many, even though stacked lights are growing on me. Finally, there's the price. The Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GX comes in at $18,499 US before taxes and dealer prep while the Moto Guzzi Stelvio without the Radar Rider Assistance System is coming in at 16390 US, some $2,000 cheaper than the Suzuki. I would imagine the Radar will add six or $700, and the rumored semi-active suspension, which is found on the Mandelo S, is likely to add another 2000 US, like it does to the V100S as compared to the stock V100. But this last bit is pure conjecture, as pricing still hasn't been announced in either the US or Canada for the Stelvio with the factory option PFF Rider Assistance System, the radar. But Piaggio Group does say that it should become available in both markets sometimes in the second quarter of 2024. So the Stelvio is better placed to scoop more buyers offering their base bike for 2000 less than the semi-active suspended Suzuki. Personally, I have both these marks in my garage and have a long affiliation with Suzuki. These latest Gutsis seem in every way modern without having lost any of their charisma. I find both bikes appealing as tourers, attractive to look at and offering features that I would use. I will admit the active suspension is a big draw for me, particularly when loading the bike up and taking a pillion. But the charisma of the Gutsi also tugs, as does its ability to do some light off-roading. For me, until I ride them, I simply won't know. But what do you think? Which one of these bikes grabs your attention the most? Has the long-awaited Stelvio lived up to your expectations, or does it flatter to deceive in your opinion? Is the surprise arrival of the GSX-S 1000 GX a welcome addition to the premium touring market? Would you consider either of these bikes, or did you expect more? I'd be really interested to know. Let me know what you think in the comments below.
And if you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. This is the Blue Marble Rider, out.